San Francisco housing is dropping in price faster than you could ever imagine. I mean, if you guys like New York City and Seattle are dropping prices, wait till you see San Francisco. I've never seen a market like this. And even in places where they're saying real estate prices are dropping, compared to the Bay Area, it's on a whole different level. So just a good example, and four San Francisco homes are for sale with some of the most insane price slashes. You have this unit here. It's a pretty modest unit. It's two bed, two bath with a private roof deck and a garage space with an EV charging station. So everything's already packed for for you. 450 Hay Street, it's a penthouse. Last sold for a little over two million, now being listed for 1.7, and I highly doubt anyone has bought this unit despite being a very good unit. Then you head over towards 1688 Pine Street. This is actually one of the nicer condominiums out there. And this is a one bed, one bath, Used to be sold for 880k, now it's selling for 800k, and I guarantee you prices will be slashed even more. And generally, units like these don't actually go down in price. I mean, check out this condo here. It's in a pretty decent neighborhood. It's pretty far away from the Tenderloin District, and the building itself is a high caliber building. Like it's not a bad building at all, and you're right next to Whole Foods and an EV charging station. This is a very nice building. So I'm actually surprised that they're actually selling one beds for just 800 grand. Now, what's really crazy is many of these sellers, even with the nicer units, are continuously cutting down in price because despite valuations for several of these properties going down, guess what? The city is refusing to decrease the property tax for them. So the property tax is super high, HOA is super high, home insurance is even higher. And you also have many other things like high interest rates, causing many sellers to simply sell at a massive loss. I mean, look at this one. 17 Guy Place used to be listed for like 11 million, now being listed for a little under $6 million. Of course, it was built during the pandemic on 0% interest rates. I guarantee you somebody probably went in, they bought like an old crusty townhouse and they tore it down. Loans were super cheap and they built this whole entire five-store townhouse and they're trying to sell this for $11 million. At first, they try to sell for 15 whopping million dollars in 2022. Now they're trying to settle for a little over $5 million. This is insane. These price cuts are not normal. And here's the thing, it's actually a building that's worth $15 million. Location's pretty decent. You're also getting new construction, even a garage space. So what's bad about this unit, right? This is a very high-end unit and it's worth $15 million at the peak of the housing bubble in San Francisco. But now you can't even sell this for 5.8 million. Nobody even wants it. There isn't even any luxury buyers on the market who's willing to pay $5 million for a unit, $6 million or $7 million. I mean, just look at some of the biggest condo groups. You know, you also have Stewart Lane. They're trying to sell theirs, but nobody wants it. And the last sale they got was like a full year ago. And just constantly more and more of these units just selling for extremely cheap prices. And it's very scary to see a situation. And then you got like situations like these where like a whole entire San Francisco tower sells for a 50% discount, initially listed for about 180 million and they sold it for 60 million. And what's really scary about this is they paid $120 million back in the early 2000s. So two decades of holding on to a piece of real estate you bought it for 120, you better sell it for double that price because one, inflation is crazy. You know, with all this money printing, 120 million now is worth so much less than before. But guess what, they had to sell it for $60 million. That's crazy of building this big and probably one of the best office districts in all the Bay Area is selling for better than Black Friday deals. And what's even worse is this building next to it, Stewart Lane. Yeah, they recently built this for condos, super high end, probably one of the most expensive I've seen. And nobody really wants it, right? This building here next to the bay, unblocked views, but at the same time, it's next to a building, literally, that's sold for 50% off, which is causing a lot of people to worry about the true valuations of these condos. Like this condo here is listed for like $3 million, 1,600 square feet no buyers, right? And they're not gonna slash about 50% just because their neighbor slashed their building at 50%. And the reason why is they gotta at least break even. 
I mean, a lot of these units are not being sold. And many of the people who initially bought these units are now trying to sell these units. San Francisco is no longer the city that it used to be. You know, this building is very nice. You know, made by some of the best developers. I, myself, like the architecture of the building as well. Insanely great amenities. You also have units like these, where you got like a terrace and a rooftop garden. Very nice units, but nobody wants them, right? And this is causing a lot of people to really, really think about if San Francisco is even worth investing in the future. Because some of the biggest construction companies have just simply left. Some of the biggest construction projects, like Hayes Point and One Oak, skyscraper projects, have now been canceled due to lack of investors. Tourists also blast San Francisco's tenure industry as one of the most depressing places they've ever been. And imagine hosting a, imagine an Airbnb in San Francisco and looking outside, you see people just doing drugs. And this is a software engineer guy, a ride of the Tenderloin neighborhood, and was pretty shocked to see this whole entire situation pan out. Basically, you just have people just doing drugs everywhere. There's trash everywhere, litter everywhere. And the crazy part is the city just doesn't care, right? This isn't normal for a city. I mean, for a such a high-end first world city like San Francisco, with tech companies everywhere and big CEOs, having straight up whole neighborhoods being just drug rings and just people doing fentanyl is a really crazy scene to behold. And even like foreign tourists are pretty shocked to go to some of the West Coast cities and just straight up see like people doing drugs smack in the middle of downtown. Because the Tenderloin is actually a very good neighborhood based on proximity, right? It's like sandwiched between like downtown, Chinatown, the touristy area, and also the Mission District. So Tenderloin District is actually a very good district if it was cleaned up. But it's always been like this for several decades and just shows you that San Francisco just doesn't really have the ability to do massive changes. And not to mention, they did clean up for the APEC event. You know, the China thing, big CEO thing, Elon Musk is there. And after the APEC event, the city is literally just falling back the same way. You know, it's actually insane how fast they cleaned up just for the APEC event. And then after the event, the city just goes right back to drug use and homelessness. And even business owners are saying that there's, there's starting to be poop on the streets again, which is a wild thing to say. And this isn't like the first restaurant owner to come out and say about this. We've had several restaurant owners on news stations saying that San Francisco is literally back to the way it was after the APEC event. And it was back to the way it was like, at a super fast speed. So people are saying that, yeah, San Francisco, they can fix it, but they just choose not to. They much rather just be in a situation where they just don't do anything. And this is actually making a lot of people very frustrated about the situation. This is why so many developers have left. Even big malls like Westview have left. Amazon Go, you also got Whole Foods, Uniqlo, Old Navy. Even like the Ikea is not even getting any business anymore because of the intensive crime on the streets. You know, let's see what happens. If they do, you know, make something super drastic and start cleaning up, all the better. You know, maybe you actually get companies back again. So thanks for watching, guys. Comment below. And see you later.